In this next series of videos, we're going to be talking about stroke, specifically ischemic stroke. And the ASEP clinical policy on the treatment of ischemic stroke from February 2013 uh, claims that there are 795,000 new strokes a year, and that stroke is our number three leading cause of death. And that in the year 2005 alone, one in 17 people died from stroke. Those are some pretty remarkable numbers. So what a stroke is, it's damage to brain tissue, usually caused by some sort of perturbation in the blood supply. Now there are two common causes of stroke. There's the bleeding or hemorrhagic cause and the ischemic cause. The uh, ischemic cause accounts for about 80% of the strokes. And so of the hemorrhagic strokes, there are two subtypes. The first is intracerebral, and as a, the name implies, it's bleeding inside the, the, the brain. So here I've depicted a CT scan, and if blood looked red on a CT, which it doesn't, it looks white, it, you would see that it would be inside the brain here. And the other kind is subarachnoid, or bleeding outside the brain in the subarachnoid space. And again, here I've drawn a CT, and if, if blood looked red, you would see that it's actually in the spaces around the brain, like here it is outside the brain and kind of getting into the sulci there, and it can even get into the ventricles, and so this would be subarachnoid. But in this series of videos, we are not going to be talking about hemorrhagic bleeds. We will be focusing on the ischemic bleeds. And these can also come in one of three varieties. The first is a decrease in cerebral blood flow, and that could be from any kind of shock state. So let's say the patient has a heart attack, and so their heart's not pumping blood well, and it's, so it can't pump blood up to the brain. So the brain is not getting enough blood, so that can cause a stroke. The next one is thrombotic. So in a thrombotic stroke, let's say we have a blood vessel here, uh, what's happening is a clot is forming within the blood vessel, and that's what's preventing the blood from flowing, flowing up to the brain. And so what could cause that? Well, the first is um, atherogenesis, atherogenesis so, uh, so you may have atherosclerosis in a blood vessel, which can serve as a nidus for a clot, or it could actually uh, uh, block the blood vessel itself. Another way that a clot may form is if there's a dissection, which is a tear in the wall of the blood vessel, and then that, of course, can serve as a uh, place where clots can form. And so those are, those are just two examples of thrombotic clots. And the final one is an embolic uh, disease process. And what that is is a clot that forms somewhere else and then gets it breaks free and it goes up to the brain. So the common example of that is atrial fibrillation. So here's the heart, but the atria is actually uh, quivering, it's, it's fibrillating, and then what happens is you get a mural thrombus forming, meaning that along one of the walls of the heart there is a clot that's forming, and then eventually that clot breaks free, goes in the ventricle, goes up the aorta, and eventually goes to the brain where it disrupts the blood flow as it plugs up one of the arteries up there. This can actually even happen after an MI. Let's say you have an MI here, and that leaves part of the ventricular wall stunned, so it's not pumping properly, and so a clot would form there, and then that clot can also break free and then go up to the brain. So next, let's look at exactly what's going on here during the stroke. So here I've drawn a piece of brain tissue, and here is the blood vessel that supplies it, and you can see that there is a clot that is formed in here. And so now this tissue, uh, at least the middle portion, is not going to be getting any blood, and so that tissue is going to starve, and that tissue is eventually going to die. And so you have a bunch of dead tissue here which has been starved. Now the tissue that's immediately around that dead tissue 
uh, isn't dead yet. Now, the reason is because it could be getting blood supply from, uh, you know, its neighbor. So it's getting, it gets some of its blood supply from the neighbor and some from here. And so it's just getting less blood supply than it needs. So this part is not dead, but it's, it's hurting. And that part, portion is called the penumbra. So this central area is dead, but this outer area, the penumbra, it's not dead yet, but it will die if it continues to go without uh, a su sufficient blood supply. So the whole point of this is we want to re-establish blood flow here so we could save this, this penumbra. So brain tissue dies when the, the cerebral blood flow uh, goes below 15 to 20 deciliters of blood per milligram of brain tissue every minute. So obviously the penumbra has a cerebral blood flow that's greater than 20 but not sufficient to stay alive. So, and one more thing happens that we need to talk about during the stroke and that's called cerebral autoregulation. Well, actually, that happens regardless of whether there's a stroke or not. That's what the brain normally does. And you can see that depicted on this graph, which you rem may remember, which shows that no matter what the blood pressure is, so we could say between 50 and even like 150, the, the blood flow is going to stay about the same. It's going to be about 50 right there, right? So the, the blood is going to auto-regulate its flow in order to get a constant blood flow to the brain. Now, what happens in a stroke is this resets. And so what will happen is the whole curve will kind of move over to, to the side of it. And uh, what that means, if you look at this, is that in order to maintain this same cerebral blood flow, we need a little bit of a higher blood pressure. And so you'll notice that the, your patients who have a stroke, they tend to have high blood pressure. And your initial inclination might be to decrease that blood pressure back down to normal, but hold off for a second. And remember, look, the body is doing that on purpose because it wants to try to keep blood flowing up to the brain because it's not getting blood. So that's why it's getting, uh, it, it's, it's increasing the blood pressure to push more blood up there. So don't, don't jump to decrease that blood pressure right away. The cerebral auto-regulation curve shifts to the right. And so this concludes our first video on stroke. And we talked about a whole bunch of stuff. But remember we're talking here about ischemic stroke, right there, ischemic stroke. And uh, as you'll through, see through these series of videos, our goal here is to get rid of this clot such that we can then reestablish blood flow to the brain and feed this penumbra, which is starving, and hopefully save it from death. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.